Uh, how many of you are just uh, hungry and thirsty for more of Jesus? How many of you, <laughs> amen. How many of you, you've just made yourself available this year, saying, Holy Spirit, come and possess me, come and burn in me, come and use me. I want to be used to, to reveal, to be a representative of Christ Jesus this year in an unprecedented way. Wave at me if I'm, if I'm talking to, to someone. Come on, come on. J just declare me right now, Jesus loves me. And he wants to partner with me to unfold his kingdom on the earth. How many of you believe that this morning? Come on. It's such an honor to have you here. Um, it's good to see so many faces that I don't, that I don't recognize. And then uh, my favorite faces that I do, that I do recognize. Um, good to have you here. Listen, um, uh, this, is a, this is a big deal because um, this last week... Uh, a, a super cool church in the region, uh, New Horizon Church. Pastor Dwayne Wolf, man, they are just crushing it. They're doing such a great job. And they host this amazing prophetic conference every year called Judah Arise. And man, this year they had Jeremy Nelson. They had, guys, they had the author of the Bible, um, <laughs> Brian Simmons. Guys, he actually wrote, he actually rewrote the, en the entire Bible. It, like, and it's awesome. It's called, it's, I, pre I preach from it all the time. It's called the Passion Translation. And, and, um, and, and it's definitely one of the most passionate translations. It, it's awesome. Man, it's, Brian Simmons was there. And then they had uh, Richard Gordon and all these wild, all these wild ones from, from, from Bethel. And, and, and these guys have been working hard. These guys haven't been sleeping. These guys have just been ministering and going after it. They've been working so hard. And even with their wild schedule that they've had, um, they wanted to come and be at our 9 a.m. because they heard about you, you crazy 9 a.m.ers. And, the, and, and Richard was like, Pastor Darren, what must I do to minister at the 9 a.m.? And I was like, bro, I don't know. That's my favorite service, and I kind of want to preach it. He was like, no. And so he, he gave me 100 bucks. And I was like, all right, dude, you can, you can preach at the, the 9 a.m. Um, I, I met Richard Gordon back in uh, 2015. I'll never forget it. He came into the room with a smile on his face. I'd never seen him before. He came into the room with a huge smile on his face, and he gave me the biggest hug as if we were long-lost brothers, only to find out we are. <laughs> that was the beginning of a beautiful bromance, and it's been, it's been building and strengthening ever since 2015. It's such an honor to call Richard and Libby and their beautiful family um, friends. Um, uh, we consider uh, the, the Gordons uh, family here. Any friend of the Gordons is a friend and family of, of this house. And Richard, uh, man, I, I know that you always bring, you always bring your best, um, that your ministry is your worship unto the Lord. And I know that you've been going all in, but it means so much uh, that you would be willing to, uh, to, to, to come and to serve us uh, this morning. We're so honored to have you, and we just celebrate Jesus and what he's doing in and through you, uh, through your amazing bride, through your incredible uh, world-changing family. We are so honored that you'd be here this morning. Would you just celebrate Jesus this morning as Richard Gordon comes? Come on, Richard. Let's go. Come on, Richard. Hey. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Awesome. Can we pray for you real quick? Guys, it's... It's, it's so cute. He doesn't even have a voice. So I, uh, you're not even going to be able to hear him this morning. But good thing um, you're going to be able to hear him in the spirit. Amen? Stretch out your hands. Father, ah, ha, 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 ha. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, that the joy of the Lord is strength to our vocal cords. Hey. And, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for joy unspeakable and full of glory that it would come. Hey. And just, yeah, it would just come and just recharge our brother this morning and all of his faculties. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this servant. Lord, we thank you for this son. We thank you for this, um, this ambassador of the kingdom. And Lord, we just pray, Lord, that there would be such an oil that makes ministry fun and easy this morning. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you will be glorified and our hearts will be forever changed. In Jesus' name, everyone said... All right, bud, go, man, go. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Oh. Woof! Wow. Yeah, I've, I've lost my voice. I've been screaming for two days. But, man, it's been good. <laughs> oh, boss, 
Pastor Gail, come here. I just need you to pray for me, Pastor Gail. <laughs> Lord, thank you for Richard. Thank you for his heart, Lord. And Father, we just pray the oil of the Holy Spirit all over his vocal cords today, all over his brain today, Lord. And Father, so saturated in you that, Lord, he doesn't know if he's coming or going, that, Lord, he's messed up. Lord, he's saying what a drunk man thinks in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Man, that's good. Ah, oh, I like Pastor Gail. Pastor Gail, I love you. Man, we go way back. We go way, way back. Oh, man, I love this church. I told my, my family, my, my team, why don't my team all come up and stand here? If you're here, why don't you come and just line up here? <laughs> ah, Alyssa's part of my team today, too. Um, I told my team, you know, if, uh, if I wasn't at Bethel, I'd probably come and be here with Darren. I just love this place. This is home for me. This feels like home for me. Um, before Bill Johnson and Chris Vallotton uh, chose me and, and chose to believe in me and hired me at staff at Bethel Church, uh, there was Darren Stott. And Darren pulled me out and he said, young man, there's a, there's a gift and a call in your life. I want to bring you in. And he started inviting me and started introducing me to different prophets and different apostolic leaders. And he started to treat me like a king before I had a title or um, ordained or anything. And uh, I was saying to my team, the reason why in many ways um, I have the favor of God, but where the favor of man increased in the region of the Pacific Northwest is when I met Darren Stott. And uh, he made a way for me, made a, a gap for me. He believed in me before others believed in me introduced me to Bobby Connor and different people and and uh, and I always sit with my wife at home Libby the most beautiful human in the entire world she is uh, she is heavenly she's a creature unlike any other uh, and I always tell her like I would not be where I am if it wasn't for Darren Darren is a friend of mine and uh, I believe there's an apostolic grace on your life and even this last year when there was, when COVID hits and things went low, I believe God was awakening you and there's going to be an itinerant gift that rests on you. You're going to be sent around the world and you're going to have to start strategizing what you're going to do, what you're going to do, because you're going to have two loves. Just like when you had your first child and then you had your second child, you're like, how can I love another as much as this one? And the Lord says, you're going to love this church, but your love is going to increase for the nations. And there's going to be a go, but it's not going to decrease your love for the local church. And there's going to be a go and a come and a go and a come. And it's like you're going to have two children, a son and a daughter, a son and a daughter. And so, God, I thank you that you're increasing his love like a father. You're increasing his love like a father that has a son and a daughter, a son and a daughter. It's not going to be having to let go of one, but God says, I'm expanding your love. Just like when I had my, had my son and then recently had our daughter, Ella Rose, and I thought to myself, how could I love another this much? I love Moses so much. How could I love another? And God expanded my heart. And I believe the Lord is expanding your heart. You're not going to have to let go of, uh, of the love you have for this house. But God is calling you with an apostolic grace just on your life. And I recognize it. I come under it. I see you. Uh, whenever I'm here, I come under to serve you. And you've opened doors for me. And you're going to do that for many others. Because you're a man that an apostolic grace where you let through prophets. And you let through evangelists. And you let through teachers. And you let through um, a men and women of God. And I see a, a, a gift on your life to believe in mystics. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. And I love you. Ah. Man. I sound a little bit like uh, Lou Engel. Like, what? Oh, I'm telling you. Ta, 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 ta. I mean, my, my, um, I do this thing where I always go, well, well, well. It's basically I'm copying Darren. Darren will often get up and he'll start going, well, 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 well. So much so that at Bethel, there'll be an auditorium of like 1,000, 2,000 students. And, 
And as before I even get to the microphone, the whole auditorium starts going, well, 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 well. They all start getting drunk, but that started because I started impersonating Darren, who was impersonating Bobby Connor. <laughs> so I'm a third hat impersonation. Uh, so basically, I want to be like him when I grow up. Yeah, so I love you. And we're going to have some fun today. We've got a great team from all over the nations that have come. We've got an amazing worship team. Wasn't that awesome today? <clears throat> that, that little girl, she's not sure, she, that little girl that was singing All Hail, she's from Argentina. She carries the fire of God. That guy on bass that was playing, he's from England. He carries the fire of God. That guy on drums, Destiny, he's the best drummer, I think, in our environment. He carries the fire of God. He's from South Africa. Uh, this guy that was leading here <clears throat> from India and the Netherlands, he grew up um, nine years old, prophesying, ministering, casting out demons. He's seen dwarfs prayed for, and they've uh, grown. He's seen uh, limbs grow out. It's like, you just never know who comes with you, hey? You just never know. And, uh, and then I've got a great team over here. Why don't you tell them where you're from and tell them your name? I'm Kamala, and I'm from Kentucky. Wow, Kentucky! Wow! I'm Faye, and I'm from England. Hey. I'm Abby, and I'm from SoCal. Wow. Trish from Miami. Yeah. Alyssa. Alyssa from here. Wow. And look, look, I brought my sister. Look at that. Eh? Look at your treads. Man. I'm Salome, and I'm from Switzerland. Wow. Isn't that cool? <clears throat> Man, isn't that so fun? Trish, why don't you come up? Yeah, I've been uh, just feeling this entire morning as um, we were worshiping and just talking to the Lord and, and just waiting on his presence. And I can hear him say, do you know all I want to do is just to be with you? All he wants to do is be with us. And um, I've been in this season of um, just various encounters with the Lord. And, and in the past, I've, I've, I've met him in his might. I've met him in deliverance and, you know, met him as Jehovah Jireh. But in this season, I was really beginning to meet the Lord as the bridegroom. And I've been um, just stuck on the scripture that says, the spirit and the bride say, come. The spirit and the bride say, come. And the longing of my heart in this season is to just continue for the rest of my life crying out for the more of God. To with the Holy Spirit cry out for Jesus. Wow. And I, I believe corporately as, as, as the capital B bride, as the capital C church that we are entering into this season of bridal intimacy. And that the Lord is 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 holding our hands and walking us into this deeper longing, this deeper desire, this deeper intimacy with him. And out of that place, everything else flows. It flows into our families. It flows into our workplace. It, it flows into everything that we do. Yeah. And even now as I Ooh, as I'm sharing, I just I believe the Lord is actually depositing and imparting just this desire in our hearts to see him. It's a deeper desire, a deeper longing, and a calling out to the bride. And I believe in the spirit that the Lord is actually touching our hearts today. He's going to be touching our hearts today. And I actually see the spirit of the Lord in the room. It's like this, this hand of the Lord that's just ripping and, and touching our hearts and grabbing our hearts. Jesus, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. 
Yeah, and if you could just close your eyes and actually put your hands out in front of you like you're about to receive a gift. And just say in your heart, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus. Wow. I was praying a a few weeks ago, I was in my room and I was just worshiping the Lord and I was caught up in the spirit and I just saw, I saw Jesus and and, and what I saw shocked me. What I saw shocked me. Oh, come Lord Jesus. (laughs) Come Lord Jesus. Wow. (laughs) Come Lord Jesus. (laughs) I could see the Lord and he was standing off to the side and he didn't say anything to me. Actually, I could feel him. Before I saw him, I actually felt his presence. And I felt this longing in his heart, this deep, deep longing in his heart. And I could feel how much he longed to just be with us, how much he just longed to be with the bride. He just longed to be with the bride. He just loved, he longed to be with the bride. And even in my, my season and my questions and my answers and the disappointments and I'm coming to the Lord and I'm saying, Lord, why can't you fix this? Why can't you do this? And all he had to say was, I just want to be with you. 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 And I just, I feel him hovering even um, over us in our, in our families and the disagreements in our families. The Lord is just, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. And I believe that uh, the Lord is actually blowing on some smoldering wicks in this room. Smoldering wicks in this room. Yes. And he will not snuff out. He will not snuff out. And it's out of encounter that we actually receive the more of God. The out of encounter we receive the more of his fire. And it's out of the encounters that we actually receive the more of the desire of God. Amen. Yeah. So we just thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We honor what you're about to do. We honor what you're about to do. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. There's a woman um, right over here. Your eyes are closed. (laughs) Could you just stand for me, please? Yes. (laughs) Wow. I just, I just hear the Lord saying how much he just longs to be with you. And I have this picture of you just in this gown, in this, um, in this wedding gown. And I believe you're entering us in a season of just marrying the Holy Spirit. And I believe the Spirit of the Lord is going to descend upon you and actually birth something new in your life. I feel a fresh uh, fire and fresh freedom just being released over you right now released over you right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your fire. Thank you, Jesus. You're birthing something new in this woman of God, in this woman of the Spirit. And I actually believe you're going to be walking into a series of encounters where God brings you up into the Spirit. And I see you hovering over the city as this, this prophetic intercessor. And I just see you with the Lord just actually praying and releasing, just praying and releasing the angelic, praying and releasing and praying the will of God over the city and actually preparing for the harvest and preparing for people that are about to be saved and to be about to be reaped into the kingdom. And I believe the Lord is actually anointing your mouth in this season, anointing your mouth almost as just like a mother prophet. And I see you prophesying to, to people in your family. There's um, unbelievers in your family who don't believe in the Lord. And I see you coming in with, with words of knowledge and words of wisdom and actually prophesying. And then I don't know if there's um situations where there's been addiction in some of your family members, but I see the Lord actually giving you the word of the Lord for them in the season and it actually brings them right into an encounter. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, for this mother prophet in this season, for this warrior intercessor. I thank you, God, that you're branding her, God, with that, that deep longing, that deep desire to be with you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Thanks, Jesus. Thanks, Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. Thanks, God. Thanks, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, there's a woman um, back here with, with the green shirt. Could you stand for me, please? 
Yeah. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I just, I, I see the Lord just saying, you have not seen nothing yet. You have not seen nothing yet. Wow. You are so big in the kingdom. And there is a significant call on your life, a significant, wow, call on your life. And I believe this is actually a marking moment, a commissioning moment right now. And that there's actually a fresh mantle just being released while wow, released over your life. I thank you, God, the longing of your heart, even for uh, a revivalist being brought into her life. I see you, the Lord, putting you into a family and you're actually building something in the spirit with a family. Wow, I, I see the, the spirit of the Lord bringing an acceleration and a power to the things that you've been um, putting to the ground and you've been uh, actually planting and planting seeds. And I see those Lord just bringing, bringing them up almost like um, beanstalks and they're reaching up into the sky. And I, I believe that your reach is about to expand in this season. I don't know what you do, but I see the Lord just expanding your reach and your platform I don't know if you're involved in social media, but I, I believe the Lord wants to anoint your voice in, in a way that you've never seen him anoint your voice before. And there's a communication gift. There's a, a, a teaching gift. There is a, a, a even worship gift on your life. I, I believe the Lord is going to brand you with a fire on your voice, a fresh fire on your voice in this season. There's actually going to be things that the Lord is going to birth on the inside of you that you're called to release corporately to the bride. I thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes, a woman of the spirit, a woman of the spirit, a woman of the spirit, a woman of the spirit. I thank you, God, for the fire of God that would rest on her life and that would trailblaze before her in Jesus' name. I thank you for a fresh fire encountering her in the secret place. I thank you for a fresh fire coming even upon her family and that the spirit of the Lord is bringing unity and reconciliation to your family. He's bringing unity and reconciliation. And he says he's not out. It's not. He's not. Time is not out for your family. Time Time is not out for your family, that there's actually, a, a, the power of the Lord is actually coming and bringing union and communion to your family. So I thank you, Holy Spirit, wow, that you're not done yet, God, and that she has not seen nothing yet for your kingdom. And just, wow, use her, Lord, use her, Lord, wow, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Thanks, God, thanks, God, thank you, Holy Spirit, thank you, God. Oh, this young woman here with the, the gray sweater. Yes, can you stand for me, please? Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you, God. Wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, wow. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. This is a season of encounter for you season of encounter, season of encounter. And I believe that you're going to meet the Lord in ways you've never met him before. I see the spirit of God even hovering in your bedroom <laughs> as you walk, as you walk into your bedroom, I see you falling to your feet in the presence of God. And, and like a Moses being, being led up to the, to the mountain and, and, and beholding the glory of the Lord, there is something significant on these encounters in the secret place in this season. And I believe the Lord is preparing you for so much more for your life. I believe you're actually, uh, wow, I feel the Lord is just saying that, that you haven't even really started your life. Life. you're actually about to start it there's another uh there's an increase on your life there's an increase on on the calling of God on your life and I believe that even in the past where you've said oh God I'm already done I'm, I'm, I'm ready to to I don't know if it's retire or if I'm I'm ready to let things go I see the Lord actually giving you a fresh mandate a fresh mandate a fresh mandate a fresh mandate in this while wow, in this season I see you um even on the streets just being overcome by the spirit of the Lord and you walk Walking up to strangers and giving them wow, uh, wow, and prophetic encounters. Wow, I thank you, Holy Spirit. Even that you're anointing her dreams, you're anointing her night season. I believe the uh, the angel, the Lord, is going to come to you even in the night season with with dreams and visions for what's to come in the future. I thank you, God, that you're anointing her with a seer anointing. That you're giving her an ability to look into the spirit in ways that she has not before. And I believe that you're actually going to begin to discern the angelic in ways you've never had before. 
before. I believe you're going to begin to see the angelic in ways that you never have before. And I thank you, God, that the spirit of breakthrough rests on this woman. I thank you, God, in her intercession and her prayers, God, that they do not fall short to the ground. I thank you, God, that every good thing that she has been contending for in this season will come to fruition in Jesus' name. Will come to fruition in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for this intercessor, God. Thank you for this intercessor, God. We say more of your power, God, in her. More of your power in her in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, man. You. I love this place so much. How do I become a member? <clears throat> Honestly, while I was up here, I felt the Holy Spirit say, you need to sign up for the membership class. I don't know if there is a member or like a start here or something, but I, I just, I want to become a member here. So it's like my family, I was walking around, I'm like, I know you, I know you, I know you. I prophesied over you, I prophesied over you. I, I know you, I know you. Man, ah, oh, the glory, eh? Man, this is one of the best churches in the region. Turn someone next to you and say, you're, one in, you're in one of the best churches in the region. One of the best. Oh. Look at my team. They love it, eh? Oh, man, they love it. Honestly, this is one of my favorite places in the world to be. I'm not buttering you up. I'm not making you, uh, trying to flatter you. I love this place so much. Man. Oh, I love it. This is for me. You think he came for you? This is for me. Um, here we go. Just be careful. She's very dangerous. this morning when we were worshiping, oh, I saw the Lord reminded me of when um, the Jewish people were waiting for the Messiah and there was a season of, of silence for 200 years and um, I just feel like there's, been, there's people in this room who've been waiting for the Messiah. They've been waiting for a word from the Lord. They've been waiting for the promise. Wow. <laughs> And, um, and he came in, Christ came in a manger. He came in the most unlikely, most, he was completely opposite to what they thought he would be. And he looked different. He came as a child. He came as a baby. He came as the most almost like powerless, you know, like innocent, um, creature and, um, and I just feel for some of you this morning that have been waiting for God. You've been waiting throughout this whole season, this crazy few years of, of COVID, of uh, things that have happened. And you're kind of waiting on God and it seems like he's gone silent. I just, I feel like just as a church, as a, as a body of people that Christ is coming in again. He's coming in again. He's being birthed into your community again. He's being birthed into your lives again. He's being birthed into your hearts again. And he's being birthed through you again. And I just see, but he's coming in a way that you've not seen. He's, been, he's coming in a way that's new, that's different. It's the new thing. It's the new thing. And I heard someone say, I can't, it's been in the past few days. I've heard a lot in the past few days. But someone was saying, if the new thing is new, you've never seen it before. It's actually, you've never seen it before. You've never seen what the new thing that God is doing. But the new thing he's doing in you. He's doing in you. And he's coming in a new way. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thanks that you're coming in a new way, God. We welcome you however you want to come. Jesus, we welcome you however you want to come, God. 
I just want you all to open your hands, actually. Wow. Wow. Holy Spirit. Wow. We thank you that you're our promise, God. You're the promise. And we say you can come as however you want, however you want. And the lady with the pink top, the pink peachy top, will you stand up for me? <laughs> thank you, God. Yes. Do you just want to extend your hands towards her? Thank you, God. Holy Spirit, do you want to open your hand? What's your name? Margot. Father, I thank you for Margot. Thank you for Margot, God, and I thank you for a fresh touch today, Jesus. Wow. Yes, God. We just say yes to the fire of God on this woman. Thank you, Jesus. And I just feel like you've been contending for your children. I feel like you've been contending for your children. I just see the Lord saying he's coming through your children. He's coming to visit your children. He's coming to visit your home. And I see like a manger in your heart. And he's coming and he's laying in the manger of your heart. Wow. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Father. And I just hear him saying he's going to, he's, I don't know if you dream, but I just see him giving you like more dreams in the night. And I see him giving you, him speaking to you in the night season. Oh, thanks, Holy Spirit. Thanks, Holy Spirit. And I see, I don't know if you're writing a book, but I just see him, I see you like writing with Jesus. And I feel like there's a book that's to come. I feel like there's a book that's to come out of your story. We just say yes to the book. We say yes to the creativity, God. Yes, to the creative move through this woman. It's just not, it's not over. He's saying it's not over, Margot. It's not over, Margot. It's not over. Wow, God. And I just see, actually, I see like finances coming. I see you invest in money into, um, I just see the Lord just blessing you financially. And I see um, almost like this, um, oh, just in resources, um, in some form of way. And I just hear him, him saying, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. Um, and I see just, oh my gosh, your influence expanding. Is this your husband too? Do you want to stand too? And I just want to bless you. I don't know if you've got a business, but we just bless uh, your business, God. We just bless the, the business call on his life. Wow. And God, just thank you that he's raising people up, Jesus. He's raising people up in the business space. And we just say yes to the expansion, the expansion, God, that you're bringing through his hands, Jesus. Wow, through his mind, through his heart, God, and that you're bringing him, Jesus, to other businesses too. And you're bringing him to other businesses, to other people. Wow. Thanks, God. Thanks, God. More, God. More. Fill him again, God, where he's been weary, Jesus. Fill him. Uh, fill him, God, where he needs rest, Jesus. Thank you that you're his rest, Jesus. Wow. Rest for Margot as well, God. Rest for Margot. Wow. Yes, God. Whoosh. Thanks, God. Thanks, God, for pouring your spirit out them, on them and their family. Thanks, Jesus. Whoosh. Wow. <laughs> oh. At the end of the service, if I could ask some of your leadership team to just whack my team. You know, it was, it was on this carpet that the Lord touched me and something came out of me that blessed the region. And I want my team to get whacked with that same thing. So if you have faith to pray for impartation, just find some of these guys and just slap them if you can. So slap them if you can. <clears throat> Man, I love it. I'm just watching around the room and just tears, just people crying. and Oh, man, I just love this. We're going to have such a fun time in the next service too. I want you to open your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 9. And I want to read verse 6. You guys can stay up here. I like it. Just feel awkward if you can. <clears throat> For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and prince of peace and of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end for unto us a child is born 
and unto us a son is given. Oh, Jesus. He will be known as everlasting father. Wonderful counselor. Prince of peace. Mighty God. Oh. And for thousands of years, God prepared the earth. And he prepared this Terran land. And he prepared this place for glory to be wrapped in flesh. And he prepared it through the Jews and the synagogue. And he prepared it through the prophets, over 400 prophecies of a glory wrapped in flesh would come to the earth. A glory, a Messiah that would be coming. And through all the prophecies and all the kings and all the priests, all the intricate details of the size of the synagogue and the size of the temple, all the details and details and every law and the Levitical law and the genealogy that came for Jesus, everything was intentional. Every moment was intentional preparing for the greatest moment in history that God would come to earth and he would dwell with man in fleshly form. And on this day, there was the biggest moment. It was the collision of the third heaven realm and the first heaven realm. It was the birth of Jesus. It was the highest moment. It was the collision, the fulfillment of all promises. It's the moment that defines our timeline from AD to BC. It's the moment where a name comes to earth that becomes a swear word, Jesus. When people use it, the secular realm would use it to carry such power. The most famous person to have ever walked the earth, if you're Christian or not Christian, the most famous man, the, mo the, the greatest book ever sold in all of history on the earth, on this planet, all of history. It was this moment when Jesus, the Christ, came. For unto us a son is born. And for unto us, a child is given. Oh, and he will be known as everlasting father. Wonderful counselor, prince of peace. Oh. Knock, knock, knock. It's Joseph. My wife, Mary, she, she's with child. Um, she's ready. Is there any room in your inn? She's about to bear a child. And the innkeeper looks at his book and he goes through the list and the line and he thinks and he's like, there's no room in the inn. And I read this and I was like, what? How could this be? How could it be possible? For thousands of years, you were so intentional. For thousands of years, you prepared a place on the earth. For thousands of years, the laws, everything was so detailed. I didn't even understand half that stuff. I mean, why did you not have to eat this and not eat that? There was so much detail in the preparation for the glory to be wrapped in flesh to dwell on the earth. How could there not be room in the inn? Did you make a mistake, God? Did man make a mistake? This makes no sense. This is the high moment of Christianity. This is the biggest moment in the Bible. This is the moment where glory wrapped in flesh dwells with man. How could this be? I, I just, and the Lord said to me, it was no mistake he was born in a manger. I came for unprepared places. And 2,000 years ago, the Lord chose intentionally not to be born in a palace, not to be born in an inn. There was a reason there was no room in the inn. It's because the Son of God wanted to be born in a manger, a place where people said, that's not where humans should be born. A place that was not recognized for greatness to dwell. And he said, this is where the Son of God will be born. And still today, he's born in mangers.
slap someone next to you and say, you're a smelly manger. (laughs) You would have thought he would have been born in a perfect place. I mean, everything about the Jewish law, like it led up to a place of perfection so that glory could dwell. But why a manger? Sometimes you have to do something radical to change the narrative. And the way something starts communicates about the way something finishes. And on that day when we stand before him, and on that day when we stand before judgment, he will look at us and he'll not look at our perfection. He'll look at a Darren. He'll look at a, a Sandy. He'll look at a, um, a Paddy. He'll look at a, all my friends here. And he'll say, that's the manger I was born in. That's the manger I was born again. He doesn't want to be everlasting father in the perfect place. He wants to be born as everlasting father in your manger. He wants to be born in a weak place. That's where he wants to be prince of peace. In a weak place, in your brokenness with your father, in your brokenness with your mother, in your disqualification, he says, that's where I'm going to be born. Throughout history, he doesn't choose the perfection He chooses mangers. Bill Johnson took an F on public speaking because he was too nervous to communicate in the audience. But God chose him to be one of the best communicators in our age. Chris Vallotton, at 40 years old, bankrupt. Businesses all bankrupt. And now he oversees a $65 million organization. It's a terrible idea. (laughs) It's just a bad idea. It's just a terrible plan. What if it happens again? It's just a bad plan. He has no education. All he's got is a high school degree. Why is he overseeing all the schools? This makes no sense, Scott. This is the worst plan ever. Have you ever felt like you're not even chosen by your father? Your father didn't even choose you, your natural father. Samuel goes to anoint the king, and he says, show me all your sons. And Jesse brings out all his sons. David's father didn't even choose him. And God says, that's the manger I'm going to be born in. (laughs) I'm wrecked. I know this house loves me. I know this place loves me. I know Darren loves me. I come here, I feel like I'm treated like a king. Honestly, I walk in the room, you guys, Darren puts on the best spread. Everyone gives me a hug. Um, Guys, treat me like I'm your kid. I've been coming here for five years. I feel like royalty when I walk in this room because I, I feel like family here. But let me tell you, I grew up so insecure I grew up so insecure with social anxiety. I had one or two friends my whole life. Like I was just not the chosen person. I remember 13 years old, I'm sitting with my friend and we're like, man, imagine if we had a girlfriend, wouldn't that be cool? I said to them like, man, I can't even manage just having a girl that was a friend. I c- I had so much social anxiety that I would chameleon people so they would like me. I'd, I'd copy them just like hopefully maybe they would like me because I, I just wasn't chosen as a kid. And I just, I pinched myself. I'm like, what am I doing here? But he still is born in mangers today. And I believe if you're hiding your manger from God, you're hiding his chance to be born as Prince of Peace. You're hiding this chance for him to be born as wonderful counselor in you, an everlasting father. That scripture is Isaiah 9 verse 6. 
For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Where does he want to be called that? Where does he want to be called that in your life? I know it's so, just a big picture of story, but let's bring it home. Where does he want to be called that in your life? In your manger. In your mess. That's where he wants to be. I promise you I'm not like winding you up. This is the key. This is the key to connection with God. Open, when you think he wants your perfection and your greatness, he wants your weakness. In the Passion Translation, Corinthians says this, your weakness is a portal into his power. Oh, how's that? Eh? But why do we keep hiding it? Hey, I'm a little weird and flamboyant. The more weird and flamboyant I get, the more God seems to move. I'm not saying you need to become weird and flamboyant. But I'm just realizing, like, maybe I'm not that, like, man's man. I'm like, I'm like, wow, sata. That's just me. When Jesus came to earth, he was born in a manger. When he came into my life, I had no clue what I was doing. I was the least likely. I did not have my stuff together. I would say even today, I'm not saying I'm in sin. If you're in sin, you need to stop that. It's not God's plan for you. But if you've been going through some stuff and your life isn't totally together just yet, give me a little wave. You are the perfect manger. You are exactly what he's looking for. You're like, if I could just get these things right, God, then you'll come. Right now, where you are, you're perfect. If he could do it in a manger, he still does it today in a manger. <sighs> ah! that is going to mess you up for the rest of the year. It's going to be Christmas time all year long for you. It's going to be Christmas time all year long. I've been messed up every day because of the intentionality of the gospel. Oh, he loves to choose mangers to be born. And on that day when we stand before him and he looks at us, he won't look at our perfection he'll see a place where his son was born. He'll see a manger and he'll say, this is altogether lovely. Oh, man. If you're far from God today, somebody dragged you along and said, there's this crazy guy with funny hair. You should come. I want to let you know, God's not far from you. I don't believe in a separation gospel. Some of the church believes that God's far from the unbeliever. I just don't think so. I believe the kingdom of God is at hand. And he's closer than you think. He's waiting for you to just say, Jesus. All who call on the name of Jesus will be sozoed, will be saved. Healed, delivered, empowered, all that call on his name. Every eye closed right now. If you feel far from God, if you feel far from God, I've got to give this opportunity. If you feel far from God, if you feel like you're a, just a big messy manger where animals are born, I believe God's saying, I want to be born there again. And if that's you, I just want to stick your hand up and I want to pray for you. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's amazing. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would, be, you would come in in their darkest place, you'll be born again. Jesus, you do it like you did 2,000 years ago. You get born in the mess. I prophesy 
that he will, you'll see him as everlasting father. You'll see him as provider. You'll see him as wonderful counselor and prince of peace. If that's you and it was maybe your first time, it's been a long time since you've been at church, I want you to come up and I want you to um, connect with me and, and Darren after this. If you're here and you're feeling weak, God wants to encounter you. I want you to think of the area that you carry weakness in. I want you to hold it in front of you with your hands. God, I pray that you take this. And God, this is the portal into your power. Jesus, I've been hiding this too long. Dressing up for church way too long. Putting on that suit like Adam did, still for church. Got to get naked now, and I present this to you. Come into my manger. Be born again. People here with broken relationships, Jesus says, I'm coming in. These people here with the failed business, Jesus says, I'm coming in. There's people here that they think they're a failure because their life hasn't amounted to what people said it was. Jesus says, I'm coming in. Oh, if this word's speaking to you right now, I want you to stand to your feet. If this word's speaking to you right now, I want you to stand to your feet quickly in faith. <clears throat> And if you find there's tears in your eyes, and if you find God moving you, I want you to come to the front very quickly, as quickly as you can. Come in faith, come in faith, come in faith. He wants to touch your people. I'm going to end with this. Can you just play some keys for me? My team's going to go around. They're going to lay some hands on some people. God, I thank you that you do not make broken things. But what you do is you come into broken things. And you make Saul's, Paul's, Simon's, Peter's. You take David from the field and you make him a king. You took Richard from anxiety and depression and you put him on a stage. Makes no sense, God. And he'll take you and your family and he will come in. Oh God, we welcome you into the manger. We declare, would you be everlasting father, wonderful counselor, mighty God in this place. Oh, come in, come in, God, come in, God, come in. We welcome you, Jesus. Come be born again. There's someone here, there's son. You're trusting for your son. He's far from the Lord. We call him back into that manger. God, we come, come into that manger of that son, Jesus. Oh, there's someone whose finances are struggling right now and their business is failing. Oh, God, we say, we'll be born again in that manger. Born again in that manger. Born again in that manger. Oh, Jesus, touch the hearts. Touch the hearts. Oh, as tears happen in this room, God, pour out your love, God. Pour out your love, God. Pour out your love, God. Pour out your love. Oh, pour out your love, God. Pour out your love, God. Pour out your love. God, in a house that I love, would you pour out your love? God, I know the story of Seattle Revival Center. This is a manger of a place. God, but you use this place for revival, God. Oh, this place has a story, a manger story. But God says, I'm being born here. I'm being born here. Oh, God, come in your love, God. Come in your love.